time of the gods, there was peace, and the peoples of Arian Well lived in a mighty basin, surrounded by tall black mountains that kissed the skies. Each tribe knew the gods by name and by face, and would invite the gods to dine with them. And together they would make fine songs and intricate dances and laugh through the long hours together. <laughs> well, well, one day, a mighty darkness fell over the land and out of the cracks in the ground, strange beasts appeared. But these were not like the beasts the people had seen, for they had sharper teeth, crueler horns, thicker spines, and they hunted the tribes for fun. These beasts killed, maimed, tortured, and burned everything they found for their own amusement, and the people ran to the gods for help. Save us! Why did you create these horrible beasts that seek only to kill us? I did not create them, Aluria said, and one by one the gods all denied their part in the creation of these beings. All except Lurian, who was nowhere to be found. Aramis seemed most upset and went to find him. You cannot hide from me, brother. Show yourself, he cried, and searched everywhere the tops of the mountains, the roots of the trees, even the holes in the clouds through which the rains fall. But Lurian was nowhere to be found. Exhausted, Aramis sat down to rest on a log, and as he did so, he heard a muffled cry. While looking inside the log, he saw Lurian disguised as a spider. There you are. Tell me and do not lie to me. Did you create these demons? All eight of Lurian's legs quivered as he answered, No, I did not. I saw them. They crept and they crawled and they appeared from deep within the earth when the shadows fell at night. I grew curious, so I followed them as they returned at dawn and brother. We must hide. Aramis had never seen Lurian frightened before. He tried to comfort his brother. I will go and look, and we shall see what has frightened you. Rising from the log, he waited until nightfall, and then followed a band of demons as they pillaged and burnt the forest, and then silently shadowed them as they slunk back down into the depths at the coming of dawn. He followed them for miles, deep, deep under the surface, and what he found there terrified him. In the darkest places of the world, he found unseen legions of demons, a festering, roiling hive of unspeakable monstrosities, all screaming, all hungry, and all evil. He fled back to the surface and called forth the other gods to tell them what he had found. Well, what can we do? Feliana asked. We can fight, Serka cried. No. A new voice joined them, that of the Great Mother. You cannot face them. You do not have the strength. You must focus your energy on binding them and sealing the cracks. Well, they're not enough of us, the gods cried. We can help, cried the people. We are brave and many. And so the gods, with the help of the people, sealed all the cracks in the world with rock over many fearsome and bloody battles until the demons worked out what they were doing. Why well, then they rent the world in the basin that the people called home. A tear so big that it kept opening, no matter how hard they tried to fill it. Finally, Andre stepped forward, and the gods tried to stop her, for they knew what she was to do. No, my love, do not do this, Circa pleaded, but she hardened her heart to him. I must for this land is mine, and I will heal it. Calmly, she strode to the tear and stood above it, a circa clove each demon that approached her. She began to change then, transforming into the largest tree that had or has ever been. Her roots pulled for many miles, binding the tear together and the strength of her trunk prevented even the sharp claws of the demons from piercing her. 
Soon, the tree was so large that it could be seen from everywhere in the basin, and the land was at peace. The people celebrated and knew the tree was holy, and they loved Andre even more for her sacrifice. In despair for her sister, the gods withdrew. Circa mourned his love by casting his body beneath hers, causing the inside of the world to be forever filled with flames to burn the demons, his devotion protecting her even now. Feliana sank beneath the waves, her tears salting the oceans forever. Carrion's frustration turned to mighty storms that swept the lands, creating the seasons. Aramis and Aluria know that life is a cycle and mourn in their own solitude. And Lurian, he remembers that the demons are not gone, only trapped. And even trees, no matter how mighty or holy, eventually die.